I'm having a good day, too. It was called No Collusion, No Obstruction. There is no evidence of the Trump campaign collusion with the Russian government's hacking. The special... Nope, 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 stop. Today is a legendary day for Spen. Everyone with a stake in the Russia investigation is out there trying to shape how you process what's in the Mueller report. But we're gonna do something different. We're gonna try to ignore the spin and the bluster and forget about all the preconceptions that brought us to today. Instead, now that this massively significant document is actually in our hands, we're gonna look at what it says. Warning, get comfortable. For starters, the report confirms something incredibly important and troubling, the thing we always forget to talk about, which is just how insidious and well-organized the Russians were in screwing with the 2016 election. The Mueller report makes it clear that this effort was designed to benefit Donald Trump and harm Hillary Clinton through Russian social media campaigns and a hacking campaign that stole documents. The report then examines the first of two foundational questions. Did the Trump campaign help that Russian effort? Now, everyone's been talking about this as collusion, but since collusion isn't a crime, legally speaking, it's better to think about this as possible conspiracy. Going into today, we knew the names of a lot of players in the Trump campaign orbit, some big fish, some really small fish, who appear to have had all kinds of weird contacts with the Russians. There's George Papadopoulos and his meetings with a mysterious foreign professor. There's Carter Page, who's out there trying to broker a meeting between Trump and Putin in Moscow. There's Paul Manafort, who gives internal polling data to a Russian contact. And you've got Roger Stone and Jerome Corsi making suspiciously accurate predictions about when WikiLeaks would be dumping what. Then, of course, there's that Trump Tower meeting, where Russians were supposed to give Donald Trump Jr. damaging information about Clinton that was advertised as being part of the Russian government's effort to help his dad. The question was, could all of this stuff have been happening on its own without an orchestrated effort by the Trump campaign to coordinate with Russians? Could there be this much smoke without actual fire? What Mueller says is, yeah. There was lots of dubious behavior by people affiliated with Trump, but it didn't add up to conspiring with the Russian government. Even the Trump Tower meeting, which seemed to Mueller watchers to be the closest thing there was to a smoking gun, turned out to have been what the Trump team said it was once they finally came clean about it, a bust. Mueller does say that the Trump campaign knew about the Russian efforts to release stolen documents and that they were happy about it. And many of the small time guys in Trump's orbit did want to connect with Russia for this or that. And there's some sketchiness here with missing or redacted evidence, deleted or encrypted texts, and uncooperative witnesses. All that said, a top-down conspiracy just didn't happen. But, the fact that his campaign wasn't in cahoots with the Kremlin wasn't enough to protect Trump from his own worst impulses. Even the suggestion that Russia helped Trump win was enough to set the new president on a mission to stop law enforcement from asking questions about it. But does that mean he obstructed justice? Well, that's the second major question in the report, and Mueller pointedly declined to reach a conclusion. Now, there's been a lot of speculation about whether he held off on making that judgment because of a famous opinion by the Office of Legal Counsel that says a president can't actually be charged with a crime. In other words, why accuse the president of crime if you can't actually charge him with it? In the report, Mueller makes it clear that was in fact his thinking. He goes out of his way to say that even though he won't reach a conclusion on obstruction, he can't say the president didn't obstruct. And you can see why. There are 11 key issues and events Mueller's team investigated that raised questions about whether the president was trying to obstruct justice. No, we're not going to go into all of them, but a few key points. The Mueller team looked into the conduct involving former FBI Director James Comey, who was looking into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who'd had contacts with the Russian ambassador and may have promised to soften American sanctions against Russia. You'll remember Trump famously asked Comey to let go of the Flynn stuff because Flynn is a good guy. The report reminds us that there's substantial evidence that Comey was fired because he was unwilling to publicly state that Trump was not under investigation. The report says the president had a motive for wanting to put the FBI investigation behind him because a thorough examination could uncover things about the campaign and the president personally that might be considered crimes. 
The next sections deal with the president's efforts to remove the special counsel and impede that investigation, which started after Comey got the ax. Today's new fun fact, upon learning that a special counsel had been appointed, Trump, quote, slumped back in his chair and said, oh my God, this is terrible. This is the end of my presidency. I'm fucked. Trump later asked White House counsel Don McGahn to have the special counsel removed multiple times. There is so much more in the report about how he pressured then Attorney General Jeff Sessions to try to take control of the investigation again, and how one of the president's personal lawyers kind of threatened Flynn. Overall, what Mueller does is lay out the case against Trump, as well as the shortcomings of the evidence, in astonishing detail. I went through the report with Mary McCord, a law professor and former Justice Department official who actually makes a cameo in the report because she accompanied the acting AG to the White House to warn that Mike Flynn might have been compromised. Mueller sort of summarizes a lot of things but doesn't seem to analyze in depth. He doesn't quite connect the dots for you since he wasn't trying to make a charging decision. What, you know, what do you take from that approach? There's a couple of different ways you could have done this. If you go through the report, at, at the end of his discussion of each one of these, you know, possible obstructive acts, he then goes through these three elements. What was the obstructive act? What would be the evidence going to the ne nexus? And what would be evidence of the intent? And, and lays a lot of things out there and then just doesn't reach a conclusion. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to apply those prongs to each of these. He could have just put the evidence out there and let everything else. Someone else apply the prongs and figure yes. it all out. And again, he doesn't fully apply the prongs because he didn't reach the conclusions. And he does all those steps except that last one. It seems like he is laying the case out for Congress. Run with it or don't. I mean, whether that was in his intent or not, I'm not going to opine, but it is there. It is there for Congress to, you know, to read through and have a roadmap if that's where they choose to go. Sure. We now know that the Russian operatives who perpetrated these schemes did not have the cooperation of President Trump or the Trump campaign, or the knowing assistance of any other American for that matter. That is something that all Americans can and should be grateful to have confirmed. What was the purpose of this press conference? <laughs> Front and back. These are the obstructive incidents. Mm -hmm. So it's Michael Flynn efforts to curtail the special investigation. These wow. Are all, these are all the ten. Now, then all they're saying is this wasn't criminal. That's correct. He didn't ultimately make a decision on whether it was criminal. Yeah, and that's the important point. So he, he it looks for it. Russia. He, he made, made a, a determination decision. it was not criminal, yeah. but for the obstruction, for he did one. not make it. Right. Okay. This report is now coming out, you know, when Congress is in recess this week and next week. Um, it's the Thursday before Good Friday. I do want to be clear. I think everything about the way this report has been released has been strategic. And I think the fact that it is coming out when Congress is not in session is very deliberate. You now have our committee chair spread all over the country. Uh, and you have members of Congress spread over the country. For many members of Congress, they're put at a severe disadvantage, those particularly with no legal background. Democrats for the past two years have been really focused on this issue of obstruction of justice and the Russia investigation. What happens next? Is this still a Democratic talking point? Congress has, has made a decision, and I, certainly our leadership, that we're going to continue this investigation while doing our work. In other words, we've got to do two things at the same time because we're in charge now. So if all we've done investigations, we've really been a failure. On the other hand, there's no question that now that the report is out, there've got to be hearings. It would be a dereliction of duty if we didn't go over the report and then call in the responsible people to answer our questions about the report. That has to be done. Who do you want to see first come before oversight? Well, I think everybody wants to see Mueller first. This is not the Barr report. This is the second time we've heard from Barr. We don't even know what Mueller sounds like. That's perfectly appropriate until the report is out. 
Now it seems to me he has to come before our committees. After seeing some of this report now, do you think this bolsters a case for impeachment for Democrats? As an evidentiary matter, it probably does bolster the case for impeachment. I think it would be foolhardy, however, for the Democrats who have just taken power after eight years out of power to embark on that course. The House does the equivalent of an indictment. After, quote, indictment, it goes to the Senate. It takes two thirds of the Senate to convict. Uh, in my judgment, even if you had a Democratic Senate, that is a very high bar. What a waste of time. Congress has a lot more to do, particularly the Democrats who now control, and if all they can show for it is they went through an impeachment process that didn't take, uh, we will be held accountable. Thank you each for making some time to welcome a stranger from far west Texas. And it's great to be here in a land where people wear coats in April. <laughs> I spent the day in New Hampshire trying to figure out what the Mueller report means for the presidential campaign. I kicked things off in Derry, where Better O'Rourke was making an appearance just about the same time as Attorney General Barr was holding his press conference in DC. She overdosed her one time on heroin. This is a huge epidemic for the youth, especially like New Hampshire. It's you see what you can do for uh, voter suppression and gerrymandering. Is that a T-Rex? Oh, very cool. The Mueller report is coming out today. Yeah. What What do you think about that? What What are you expecting to see? Can you trust Barr and Rosenstein? This is the last campaign stop in America before the country sees the report. Yeah. What do you think is going to change for the rest of the campaign after it comes out? I mean, we don't know, right? Be because we haven't seen it. So we know there's one constituency who cares about the Mueller report, the media. But what about actual humans? I ran into Anna Brunt, an actual New Hampshire voter who's waiting for Beto to arrive. Oh my God, he literally says thing. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, gee. According to notes written by Hunt, when Sessions told the president a special counsel had been appointed, the president slumped back in his chair and said, oh my God, this is terrible. This is the end of my presidency. I'm fucked. <laughs> He's got a good poker face. So do you care about the Mueller report? I think it's interesting. I, I care to read it, but I don't think anything's going to happen. This is like the media's like Super Bowl day today. Why do you think that they care so much if you don't care that much? Ratings. <laughs> <laughs> when Beto shows up and you get a chance to ask him a question, what kind of question would you ask him? I would like to see somebody speak about um, how to regulate marijuana when the prohibition ends. So it sounds like uh, you're moving on to regulating marijuana and you're leaving that and, the dust. That and healthcare and, you know, the, the climate change and yeah. mental health care, especially. It's a big one. Do you feel like you're weird or most of your friends sound the same as you when it comes to a lot of these issues? Yeah, so. I think most of my friends are, are the same. Anna yeah. is over it. But other voters I talked to are still curious about the Mueller report, even if they think there are bigger issues in this election. Should candidates for president talk about the Mueller report a lot? I don't think they should talk about the Mueller report. I think they should talk about their, their own policies. So this report is like the biggest deal in Washington ever, but you're saying out in New Hampshire, maybe it's not such a big deal. It should be the Mueller report, not Barr. It, it shouldn't have been redacted. So it like could have an impact, you think, maybe, on the election, this actual Mueller report? Well, it could. You don't sound like you think it well, really it's, will. It's, that's a little, still a long ways away. I think to the detriment of what will win an election is focusing on the, the Mueller report for candidates right now. Mm -hmm. The candidates for president now have a choice in front of them. Pretend the Mueller report never happened or try to make voters care about it. Ultimately, it's their decision as to whether or not this thing is a weapon or a dud. Do you think it'll have a big impact on the presidential race at all? No. Why not? I think that our, um, our, our system is so, so divided right now. It seems that there is people who are attached to Trump no matter what.
The Mueller report is a document two years in the making that we've had about eight hours to review. We're not done with it, you're not done with it. We're really just all getting started. What we know is that Mueller did not have sufficient evidence to charge the president and his associates with criminal conspiracy. But the report found plenty of links between Russian agents and the Trump campaign. There's even a section titled Russian government links to and contacts with the Trump campaign. And some evidence that may have been inconsistent with known facts was destroyed by subjects of the investigation. Mueller also says flatly that he cannot clear the president of obstruction of justice. To quote, the president's efforts to influence the investigation were mostly unsuccessful, but that is largely because the persons who surrounded the president declined to carry out orders or accede to his requests. So the president is likely off the hook for criminal charges while he's in the Oval Office. But Trump and many, many, many people around him are definitely guilty of criminal stupidity. They engaged with and encouraged Russian agents who actively tried to undermine the presidential election. Then they publicly claimed they didn't or couldn't remember if they did and questioned nearly unanimous intelligence that the undermining they may possibly have urged on was to their benefit. Next, the president tried to influence the investigation into Russian interference, much of the time publicly, but was either too inept or too ineffective to be successful. Read the Mueller report as a political document and you'll either be enraged or thrilled. It supports both. But read it as an American and there's only one conclusion. To quote the president, sad. Technological change is disruptive. Artificial intelligence. Robotics. Automation. Whole businesses are changing. Retail. Fast food. Driverless vehicles. You guys are truck drivers. How do you feel about it? I'm scared. I deliver your food that you're eating, and it's a good feeling as a human being. What would I do if I didn't drive? I really don't know what I would do. These technologies that are coming along will displace millions of workers around the world, which would have a dramatic societal impact. At the same time, technologies are creating new jobs. How do you think automation will evolve? Machines are tools. If we have more powerful tools, we have more power to change the world. No matter what your occupation in the future, you're going to have an interaction with tech. There really should be some action legislators are taking. What worries me is by the time we get around to dealing with this, it's going to be too late. <laughs>